Welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories from Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm Fran McNeil, your host, and in the studio with me today is Gordon Del Giorgio. He is producer and owner, co-founder of Film Brothers LLC. Gordon, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So, Gordon, we have worked together. You've done a number of videos for me. And so I know about your firm, but others may not. Tell me a little bit about why you do what you do. Well, that's a good question because mm -hmm. uh, it's, I, 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 know, I sort of morphed into this business and I can't quite say how. But mm -hmm. uh, um, I don't know. I think it goes back to when I was a kid. My mother sort of made me do skits that we saw on TV or something and reenact them in front of like, you know, at Thanksgiving time and, 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 wow. and uh, Christmas in front of the whole family and we would be humiliated and embarrassed. <laughs> and, uh, but we did it anyway. Okay. And I think that we sort of have these, these, this storytelling element in, in, our, in our DNA or something. And then mm -hmm. my mother forced it out and put, gave us the nudge. And so I think in a lot of ways, it started there. Mm -hmm. And then we went and had regular, I had regular jobs doing diff different things in my life and uh, recreated myself a few times. And then my brother and I started Film Brothers in 99. We started mm -hmm. writing a movie script. We didn't know what we were doing, but Clerks was out at that time and had some big success in, in the independent market. And so uh, we wrote a, a screenplay. Uh, coughed up about forty thousand dollars of my own money Whoa. and uh, went broke. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, the that entrepreneurial was the story. <laughs> that was the beginning, and um, then uh, you know, from that time, just you know, by trial and error, we started to uh, get into more movies, and then really into commercials. And and in two thousand seven, I saw sort of this internet really exploding, and people. I said, "There's going to be people putting videos on this, and it's going to get big." And that's sort of where we've been ever since. Mm -hmm. But I do a lot of storytelling that I think sets us apart from just another video company mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we do a lot of documentary style for nonprofits, for fundraising of uh, films and things they'll show at luncheons and dinners, as well as on the internet, shorter versions of mm -hmm. that. And even for businesses, for profit businesses mm -hmm. that tell a story, I think people, the viewer wants a little bit more depth to. Mm -hmm you know, um, a brand and stuff mm -hmm. like that, rather than just, you know, come to our store and buy this and you'll get two for one special. Like, nobody wants to see it. I mean, it's just, it's like noise. Mm -hmm. So uh, less talking to the camera, more engaging the audience with mm -hmm. that kind of story. Mm -hmm. So that's, I don't know if that answers your question. I no, it, it, it does. And you have a team around you to help make sure that happens. You and your brother, there are a lot of family businesses. Um, given that you were forced to do skits, mm -hmm. um, how do you handle conflict when you're running a business with your brother? Um, well, he's out of the business now, so <laughs> that should tell you how it worked out. Um, actually, early on, you know, he was uh, a real idea guy, big mm -hmm. picture, mm -hmm. uh, lots of um, great ideas. I think he's a genius, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was sort of the business nuts and bolts, you know, gr grinding it out and making sure stuff was done on time and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he was this sort of guy, you know. That was, uh, he would work hard, but he really didn't really work the same way I did. Mm -hmm. But we made some great pieces. We really mm -hmm. did. But once I got into the commercial stuff, he didn't really want any part of it. That's the mm -hmm. bottom line. Mm -hmm. But he's still my brother, and we're still film brothers. We still love each other. Mm -hmm. So it, that's the brand we've built. Mm -hmm. And so he's part of that. So we keep it. But he has his own business. He's very successful doing his own other thing. It's just like, mm -hmm. but it was really good because, you know, brothers working together, that can be explosive. I you know? I know it can be yeah. explosive. So uh, we, uh, <laughs> We laugh about it now, that's all. Okay, yeah. good, yeah. good, good. Yeah. You have this wonderful attitude about life. Um, it is that combination of creativity and also just kind of let it go, let mm -hmm. it happen. How yeah. does that work with storytelling? Well, first first mm -hmm. you need modern medicine to take <laughs> and make sure that you you know can get everything set. You know? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that First thing about business, I think, is people, I don't worry about the money. Mm. I know the money's going to come and mm. if I do the work. Mm. You know, a lot of people get really hung up on, you know, I didn't get any money this week, and especially entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that, or people that 
kind of get into the entrepreneur type thing. Mm -hmm. And then they go, I don't know if this is for me, I gotta go get a job. And so, you know, I think that part of it is the start, is mm -hmm. to not be worried, and because that will just tear you apart. And, right, and it'll right, stop you from making us right. going forward. Mm -hmm. So I think that I never worry about that. And I get more concerned now that I have two kids and you know, <laughs> got the two mortgages and all this stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, I think how that leads in the storytelling is just to share those stories or somehow inject that kind of experience into, and I think people can relate to it. I think everybody's, mm -hmm. everybody's sort of on the same page, mm -hmm. you know, but they go about it in different directions. Mm -hmm. But it comes down to the same fears and the same anxieties and the same things. We all sort of have elements of that and I think yes. people relate if you can touch on those right you know so right. I, I don't know again if that answers your question but well, I, I no, sort of and you you modeled that when I asked you the opening question you talked about you literally brought us to a point where you were forced to perform mm -hmm. um, and I, I could feel that anxiety skits at Thanksgiving and Christmas uh, I am glad my parents didn't let me do that. Right, right, right. Um, I enjoy public speaking now, right. but I don't know if I was forced to do it, whether yeah. or not I'd have the same comfort level. Yeah. It, so. Well, I don't say, you know, when it's forced, <laughs> she was just, you know, very nudged me and nudged me and nudged me. It wasn't like no she had a belt. No ice cream unless you, know, or anything uh, like that. you did the skit. Yeah, I mean, it, she wasn't, she wasn't not going to have it any other way, but I was to do this because we did it for her, like, you know, kind of fun when it was relaxed. Mm -hmm. right. Now you got 50 people in front of you and you're just, you know, you're not and you're going, Ugh. you know, but we did it. And I'm kind of glad we did it because, you know, it got us, you know, I started doing public speaking, got more comfortable and things mm -hmm. like that and going in front of audiences of 500 people or whatever. It's, mm -hmm. you know, so I think it just sort of prepped me. My mom mm -hmm. didn't know she was doing it. I right, think, but right. She was well, really Sarah doing it for her own, gra her own <laughs> gratification. Here are my boys. See how great yeah, they yeah, are. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> they did the premiere with me, so now you're going to get the real show. Exactly. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So you are doing a lot of great things. And before we got on camera, you were sharing one of your projects. Um, is there a project that you're really proud of? I was at uh, your ninth, your eighth film shorts uh, festival. Is there a project that you're really proud of that you'd like to kind of let the world know about? Well, there's a couple. I mean, there's. Mm -hmm. the, because we do a lot of documentary style stuff, there's a lot of storytelling with that. Right. And so I'm always like, you know, right now we have about, you know, I didn't even realize until I sort of counted them up and then I got anxiety. I got 45 <laughs> active clients right now. And 45. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, oh God, God, how are we gonna get this done, right? And then you just sort of get through the day. Right. But uh, the couple documentaries that I'm working on is I'm working on, there's an architect down in Wilmington, his name's Todd Breck. And mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's in his late 70s, but you would never know it, the guy's just, he motors around. I mean, the guy just does, doesn't stop. He was going to Nashville to cut his, what he called a bucket list item, was to make a, uh, an album. And I wanted to follow him and t get his story and mm -hmm. get all the stories from the other session players and then what the motivation was. And what it's turned into, it's turned into this story about singer-songwriters and about how people are trying to make it. And while mm -hmm. I was down there in Nashville, I met a young girl about 21 who was trying to make it in, in Nashville, and I interviewed her and got her story. So I want to parallel the stories oh, and put powerful. them together. And um, I'm calling it Inside Job because that's one of the names of one of his um, of his songs called Inside Job. And I thought Inside Job is almost like inside themselves that they got to do it all themselves. You Ooh, know, so I, I tried like to do that. a play on words like with that. it. You know how yeah. the music industry has changed, and you have mm -hmm. to sort of self promote and do Absolutely. things like that. So that's a cool one. I'm also doing on, on uh, Delaware Vietnam veterans, which was a really tricky one, because I didn't want it to be a story about war, uh, uh, but more of the story about the afterlife, after people are mm. done with it, where mm -hmm. they go from there. Mm -hmm. So we're working with the Delaware Humanities Forum on a pretty big project on Delaware Vietnam vets. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm excited about that one because I just had a breakthrough, because we really were at a standstill on our, like, where, where's the hook in this story? Like, what, what's gonna be the hook? And I think we got it the other day with a couple of interviews we did, it sort of came out, and I'm pretty mm -hmm. excited about that one, too. Mm -hmm. um, and then my festival of shorts every year, my, my ninth, we do it mm -hmm. twice a year, once in the winter, once in the fall, and it's a, just a, a wonderful uh, array of films from around the world, and, um, and I'm always excited about that, because then I get to go up on stage and, yeah, and do my you shtick. Are the ham. And, uh, <laughs> And my mother's sort of ringing in my ear there, you know, about what she's created, this sort of, mm -hmm. you know, monster. <laughs> <laughs>
Wonderful monster. Like <laughs> wonderful we'll monster. We'll wonderful monster. Well, you're balancing entrepreneurship, running a business, um, a family, you're traveling, um, and you're managing 45 projects. What's your take on the inside job of being a film brother? Um, I think that what I'm learning is, again, it's just this sort of like, I don't want to get into the, this whole sort of Zen thing, but it's one, mm. one moment at a time and really mm. get like, I'm here with Fran. That's all I can deal with right now. Mm. I can't deal with the fact that after this, I got a project my editor is working on right now. <laughs> you know, I have to, I have to really block mm. it out and that's tough. You know, that's something you really have to condition yourself to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as the inside job, it's always, you know, you can't get complacent and think like, mm -hmm. yeah, this is where I am. I mean, because, you know, a month or so goes by and you're floundering and there's no money coming in. And it's not just about the money, though, so much. It's more about, you know, your own sort of flow of energy starts mm -hmm. to you, know, you start to get a little mm -hmm. complacent and you're like mm -hmm. well I just took a nap for all afternoon and I got to get up and <laughs> my wife's at work and she would be you know what are you doing all day but you know you, you deplete your energy sometimes mm -hmm. when you're an entrepreneur because you're up at night sometimes right. and you're like mine's going can't stop I know I got all these things but I've, I think I've tried to actually start sleeping better at night because I used to be up around the clock and then get the kids up and and I think, you know, when you start to get 50 years old, it's sort of like, eh, you know. <laughs> so I don't know if that answers your question. I go on tangents. Okay, but, okay. You know. So I know I put pressure on people to answer the questions. I am my stylist. Come back directed. to it. Come back yeah. to it, you know. Um, I am an artist in a lot of ways. I know. You know and, and the flow is wonderful. Right. The flow is wonderful. Again, at the core, for you, it's about storytelling. Right. Um, and you've done some really wonderful stories. What do you see, since stories evolve and have different characters, um, what do you see coming up for you in the future? Let's, let's imagine three years from now, five years from now. Well, what I'd like to do, see, mm -hmm. I started out doing feature films, Rand, mm -hmm. and it was, uh, you know, like feature-length comedies with mm -hmm. 140 actors. I mean, I've done some pretty big Whoa. ones, right? I mean, project-wise, right? right? They didn't really go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And the reason they didn't go anywhere, I think, is one, I think I was starting out and there was a lot of mistakes made that I, I've learned how to, how to be a lot better. But the main thing is I didn't have any star power. Mm -hmm. You have to have a name attached if you want your film to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's even in a documentary, maybe somebody's narrating it that's a, you know, a, mm -hmm. a, a name or something. Mm -hmm. But I found that I worked on a film back in 2009 that was a good film, but it wasn't a great film. Mm -hmm. But it had two names to it, and it, it was on, got on Netflix and Showtime. And, and so, you know, that's even a small uh, kind of uh, example. So mm -hmm. that's what I want to do. Okay. That's sort of on my bucket list is do mm -hmm. something with a name or two attached and then take my experience of the last 17 years and really write a good story. I'm working on the script. I'm redoing the script. And so that's sort of kind of on the back burner for me because, you know, I've got two young kids that I still mm -hmm. got to raise. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that they're the priority right now. And the business is, you know, driving, paying for all that. Right, you know, right, so. right. But, yeah, I think a feature film is, you know, something I want to do if, if possible. Mm -hmm. You know, so again, with a name. With a name. Mm -hmm. With a name. Okay. And it's doable. I mean, you can Absolutely. you can get people, especially mm -hmm. when people are cat can get into character acting and they're 40, 50 years old and maybe they're not in their prime anymore. And if you have roles for them, they're willing to come back and they still mm -hmm. have name. You know, mm -hmm. they still have mm -hmm. a brand. Mm -hmm. So we found that with the film I did in 2009. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's where, that's where I want to be at, at one point. That it. would be fun for me, and that would be okay. exciting. Because mm -hmm. some of the work, you know, is not always exciting. You know, mm -hmm. I'm filming, you know, another whatever, doing a little commercial together. Mm -hmm. And I just like, okay, I just, you know, I'd rather be with my kids go to Hershey Park or something. Uh -huh. you know, oh, that's the beauty of the summer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also entrepreneurship. Yep, sure. Gordon, I love just having this time to talk. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I, I see you in different lights. I am definitely signing up for the October uh, short festival. Why don't you give the details of that before we wrap well, up? Well, it's it's at uh, the Delaware Art Museum, and mm -hmm. uh, it's a beautiful place. It and, is a beautiful uh, place. You know, you come in, it's 15 bucks, so you can't beat that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see eight to ten short films from around the world, all award winners. I am see it. 
Uh, we do some commercials in between because we have different, uh, you know, uh, advertisers to it. That's how I make some in income. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then there's wine and beer and uh, soft drinks and snacks. And, uh, you know, it's just a great time. People go out to dinner a lot beforehand because it's at mm -hmm. 7. Right. So they'll go somewhere in Wilmington area and go out to a nice dinner. And then they sort of come over from there. And then uh, we have a great time. Wow. Filmbrothers.com. I was just going to say, I know people want to get in touch with you. Um, and I did like the fact that you were weaving in the advertisements of commercials that you had produced for local folks mm -hmm. and regional folks. Yeah. Um, it is a great evening. I would encourage folks to attend. Mm -hmm. And uh, now that I have my family members in the studio, mm -hmm. um, I know that I'll be going with a few more people. I have tickets in my pocket. Okay, no, I, I believe no. it. <laughs> I used to do that. <laughs> the entrepreneurial way yeah, sure. now you just send an email please click here and buy right 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 right, <laughs> right. right. more gordon thanks again for being on the show thank you uh, appreciate your time and oh. uh, look forward sounds great to seeing what's next thank you there you have it significant stories significant entrepreneurs significant tv join us next time as we continue to interview entrepreneurs from around the philadelphia region i'm fran mcneil and i look forward to you watching.